black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Okay, so today we eat something a little more pedestrian, you may call it. Basically, when I was 12, my dad put me onto something similar to this. I tweaked it, of course, because you guys know me. I'm always tweaking something. But you know what I mean. Anyhow, it's like a, a lunchtime, a snack, a something, just something. You know what I mean? It's not too cray-cray. It's just like, I'm a little bit hungry. This is lunch. So, tortillas, weirdly enough, same pack. This one's way bigger than this one. I don't get it. Truth be told, I got to just use some of this. It's intended for other videos, but I don't want it to go bad. We have serve a lot salami. It's my favorite. Mayo mustard, pickle. This is for the arug. And then we got some matzo singles. We got some extra old. Use whatever cheese you want. My dad was a Havarti guy. Anyways, white cheeses. You'll see what I'm about to do here. It's simple, but it's delicious. It's amazing. It's a good little, it's just, it's a meal, right? So we do it. All right, full transparency, my dad would usually just slam all this stuff in the tortilla, microwave it, and that's it. It'd be like a 30 second minute meal. However, y'all know I don't roll like that. So my chef is gonna have to elevate this a little bit. That's all I'm saying, but you know, it's fun. We do these things. We have the time to create a video. Do we have flame? We do have flame. So middle flame, mid light. I want some crispy edges on my salami. I serve a lot. The best salami there is. It's my favorite. Summer sausage, things like that. Now, when it comes to Genoa and all these other things, they're good too. You know, soppressata, they're good too. But it's the texture for me. Those are too, um, how do I say it? They, um, they have too much pull factor. They're like too, they don't bite clean. There's a, there's a drag in the bite. Uh, they're too, I don't even know the word. Anyways, so I'm gonna fashion these up with some heat, a little bit of crispiness, and then we're going to the microwave and we're coming back to the pan, but it is a simple dish. Do you guys hear that? I'll get you in closer. That, my friends, is the sound of flavor. That's called fat being rendered out. That's called crispy carcinogenic heat reaction unto the meats from that fat being rendered out and crisped. That's flavor, my friends. Welcome to the world. And flavor does require the old flipperoo. So we do that, a quick crisp. Keep these down here for maybe another, I don't know, 30, 20, 30 seconds, not too long. Just We're just crisping. And then we come into the tortilla. Okay, so you already know what it is. We got the tortilla on the plate. We're gonna come in with our crispy salamis. We're gonna lay them out down here as such. I think we got about five or six per. So we've got that. Okay, we've got half of our extra old cheddar pieces. All right, I like that because it's a nice sharp bite. And then we have the Kraft Single mozzarella slices. Now I know you're gonna say, oh man, what are you talking about? Processed mozza. I'm telling you, it provides a different type of melt. That's why on your burgers, you get those type of cheeses. It's a different type. It's, it's the melt that you need. Pickles, crucial element. I know you're gonna say, hot pickles, ew. I promise you, for some reason in this situation, hot pickles are the key. It's that acidic hot juice, it's amazing. Okay, so we're gonna microwave this for like 30 seconds, just get a melt, and then we're coming back to the pan. Okay. Coming fresh out the microwave. As you can see, we have a general melt, okay? Now we gotta fold it, right? Appropriately, accordingly, like this. These ends in, right? Make a nice package. Just like a nice little square, almost burrito-esque package. Now, this, 
is going to the pan for a crisp. All right, look, so it's a mid-low, even a low-low. It's a low, low ting, right? Just a little low bit of heat. We're not burning anything here. We're going with just a touch of oil. Not too crazy, just enough to coat the bottom a little bit, right? Just like that. Just a kiss. It's a little kiss from beyond the grave. I don't even know what that means, but you know what I mean. Anyhow, this side, down. We gotta seal the package, right? Seal up the package, okay? I don't know how long a side, we're just gonna check on it as it goes. All right, in the interim, while that's happening, you already know we're gonna to toss us a little side of your greens. Gotta get your greens in. A little side of a rug. Just simple. Using up the rest of this olive garden dressing. A little Italian mix. All right. Don't be shy. The best way to massage it in the lettuce is get in there with their hands. Every person who's ever worked garde manger, that's the cold side, the salad station at a restaurant, has made your salad just like this with their hands. It's the best way to toss your salad. And here's why. Because these are immaculate tools designed by the Lord himself. You can apply the right amount of pressure. You know, you don't bruise the lettuce. You don't bruise the, the herb. You don't bruise it. You just massage it. Tools bruise. Hands, they massage. And if you even had to ask, you guys know that I'm coming in with the rest of these crispy onions. <laughs> Right? Gotta have something in there for a little crunchy flavor. Okay, this is gonna go in the fridge to keep cool. All right. And we are fish spatula. Oh, and we are fish spatula flipping. Okay, that's a little dark, a little darker than I desired, but we were making salad. Okay, this side's gonna be light toast real quick. But there you have it. All right, so simple greens side salad with our lunch snack type thing boom done easy peas nothing to it but to do it and then of course we've got to slide on in with our two little little wraps And then our mayo mustard combination. And that's it. Salami pickle cheese, a little side salad, lunch wraps. Simple dish, but huge in flavor. And we're gonna find that out right about meow. All right, yo, what up? What's good with cha? Simple little uh, lunchtime slapper, basically. And this is, like I said, in the uh, cooking segment. It's, it's from my dad's brain. Now, he's a guy who's like always on the fly back in the day, like just working and doing shit. He's out in the garage. He's he's more involved with uh, working on the bikes and stuff like that. As for food for him, he's like slap it together, make it nice, eat it, da, da, da. So you could totally, like I said, just toss it in a tortilla, toss it in the micro, get, you know, a minute on it and, uh, and eat it that way. Now, I will say there is a magic to that. Talk about that as such as we move forward here, but... You guys know I gotta chef it up because that's what interests my mind is to make things a little more elevated. Anyways, simple salad, a little mixed sauce, and then our toasted salami cheese pickle. I don't even know what to call these. They're just whatever they are. So anyways, let's have a bite. We'll have some chats talk about some things about life. I got something I really actually do got to talk to you guys about. Maybe you can relate, but anyways, also the flavor of this, let's do it. Hot, very hot. Mm. but oh so incredibly good wow this 
small, slender, simple, not jam-packed in terms of the uh, physical size. Flavor, however, unbelievable. Now let's do this. Oh my God. Amazing combo. The pepperiness of arugula. Mm. Oh, that vinegar cut. With those crispy O's. Mmm. I just hit that matzo pocket. And that's that melt that I'm talking about right there. See that? That's the melt that I'm talking about when it comes to processed cheese like that. Can't get it any other way. Not get it any other way. And that's because that cheese is formed out of condensed milk, which allows that, that melt. I know this. Because the last restaurant that I worked at, we made our own cheese slices. So you need cheese, cheddar cheese, grated off the brick, and you incorporate that into condensed milk with gelatin. You cook it all together and you lay it out super thin. This is where milliliters matters. Into a pan. And then you put it in the fridge, you let it firm. This guy's in my videos all the time lately. What up, bruh? Just beeping at me. But you let it firm and then you pull it and you cut it to size. And you make your own cheese slices. Now, was it ultimately a waste of time and labor? Yes. <laughs> because the customer at a dive bar is not really gonna know the difference between a cheese slice that you <coughs> sourced from a store and probably got a good discount on. Or are you buying all the shit required and then you have to have a prep cook that's labor cost time a little bit of a not crazy but a little bit of a time consuming task so you have to weigh that balance like do i just buy the bulk of the thing that the customer's not really going to know or is my chef integrity of like i want it to be house made and taste marginally better than the industry stuff you have to weigh that option within yourself but uh Needless to say, we discontinued making them because it just wasn't worth the time and the labor. All right. So talking about business and learning and kitchen shit and things you have to consider as a chef. You have to consider cost, right? Mm. 
Now, what I really got to talk to you about is this. It's going to be, I don't know, it's maybe hard to explain, but basically, you growing into an adult and your parents still condescending you and belittling your intelligence as an adult because they're so used to raising you as a child they like call and tell you stuff or try to say stuff that's like yeah i know obviously like what are you talking about and usually i take it in stride right usually i just let my mom or dad like baby me or condescend and belittle my intelligence just out of the fact that okay they're they're just being thorough as a parent and you know they're older and wiser and that but they don't understand that it's not a good feeling to have happened to you right when you're fully capable The reason I bring this up is the example that I'm chilling. My mom calls me. I went to my sister's two days ago to help with snow situation. Da, da, da. Now she has a dog. Dog wasn't there. Dog was being cared for by my cousin. Her, her gate, her back gate to the yard. We all know that you got to keep your dog, you know, safe by making sure the gate is properly closed. Now, I've, I've had dogs my entire life. You know, third party. My mom had a dog for, a long, for 10 years. My sister's had a dog. I had a dog like when I was a kid. It's ingrained into you. You know to keep the gate and check the gate when you put them out. And, you know, it's a standard issue at this point. So I went there, I went into the backyard, da da da. Snowblower. This is so good. <laughs> Things of that nature. Her gate has issues. It's old, it's rickety, it's on a roller system. Um, it's divided into like, it's one big chunk so that it can swing open. And then there's like the door portion that's connected through hinge to the one big chunk. But because we live in a temperate seasonal climate uh, via expansion and contraction due to temperatures, it moves basically. So the gate itself on the latch doesn't always line up. So it's finicky even more reason for me to always pay attention to that anyways i'm over there the other day do the things that uh, i leave i make sure it's closed i make sure the latch is tight da, 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 da. that saturday sunday goes by today is monday Somehow, I guess, my sister got home, the gate was open, she didn't recognize, my mom saw that it was open, she's freaking out. Anyway, she calls me to basically, like, investigate whether I forgot to close it. And if I did forget about the gate to like remind me that I need to be cognizant of, the, I'm like, like I said, I usually take it in stride. But today I couldn't. And I just told her flat out, I'm like, do you think I'm a moron? Well, no, 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 no. Now she gets defensive. I go, I know you're not doing this as an attack. You're not trying to attack me or accuse me of anything, but you are, however, belittling my intelligence and my level of care 
for the dog. And the fact that you think that I would even allow that to be a thing. I said, no, I'm on point. I know what's up. I did not forget and I closed it properly. On top of that, it's not my property. If a day goes past and that gate is somehow open and the person who lives there doesn't observe that and doesn't rectify that issue, that's their problem, not mine. So don't call me basically to infer that I don't know what's up. Now, like I said, normally I let it slide. I just go, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I did close it. Must have been the wind. But you reach a threshold and you reach a breaking point when people do that to you and you go, you have to speak up because I know on the other side of that, that if I called them and did a similar, you know, inquiry or whatever, that they would feel like, is this person assuming that I'm an idiot, a moron, someone with no care with what happens in, you know, for this type of situation? But I understand it's a parental thing. They're, the, your parents are always going to like baby you and think that they have it all figured out more than you do. And they're going to discount your capabilities because they've always seen you as a child. It's frustrating, but it's the reality of a parent. And it's even more frustrating when you weirdly, now you may not have the same wisdom. You may not have experienced everything that they have in their life and you can't relate to everything and they might know more than you in certain situations, but vice versa, you're born in a different time and you just might be more capable than your parent as well. And that's hard for them to rectify in themselves. They're like, Oh, like my child has actually surpassed me in intelligence and wisdom and capabilities and care and things like that. Like, cause no two people are the same. So it's a strange juxtaposition. Um, it's hard to navigate. And this is why relationships are so damn complicated because people take things personally. And anyways, it's a lot. But like I said, if you've experienced, if you have experience with this, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you do. Anyways, amazing lunch, snack type thing. My dad put me on game. Like I said, you could just microwave it. And that's the magic that I forgot to touch on. The microwave aspect of it provides that gelatinous, almost moist. The You get steam from the tortilla, from the moisture on the plate. And it creates almost like, you know, when pizza dough is kind of a little bit undercooked and it's got that gooey gelatinous type thing. That's a different thing that it creates. This one's like a crispy version, right? But that when it's like steamed almost that's a whole different mouth flavor experience and that shit is also delicious so either way you slice it it's delicious but you could do it either way i actually like the microwave version a lot but for chef purposes of this video that's how i did this okay till the next one you know what to do eat good live well vogue and stay stay true <laughs> If you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe, as well as check out my pinned comment down below to find other ways to support this channel. Thank you for watching, eat good, live well, and stay true.